Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, I'm here at my mixing desk here, and it's been a while since I've given you any updates on the equipment here in the control room. Uh, a lot of the videos that I produce here at Creative Sound Lab happen in the live room, and I've actually been doing quite a bit of kind of switching out of gear and updating and switching stuff around. And I'll have to make a new tour video about the control room and what I have going on here. I've also changed DAWs. Some of you have noticed that uh, I'm using Studio One. And my big draw to this DAW is really just the visual elements and just the use of the in and out plugin called Pipeline XT. I thought this like picture idea was was just fantastic. You know, I can take pictures of the settings. It just is very visually easy to follow along. So I figured this was a great time to kick it off with kind of an additional type of video that I can have here on Creative Sound Lab, which is a kind of more hands-on mixing. But I also have embedded the footage of mini clips of the actual performer at the mic. So I'm actually merging the two worlds of recording and mixing. So in this video, I just really want to dive into a new type of video that I could have here on the channel and really just kind of do some uh, creative sound exploring. So everything about this is very reactive, okay? There are so few elements going on here. There's only two microphones that one thing affects the other, affects the other. Here is what the original two microphones sounded like. No effects, no EQ, no processing. And here is just the overhead mic. That's the uh, Signal Art uh, U47 uh, reference model. And then this is the Soyuz 017 out in front of the kick drum. And together again. So, you know, it actually is a pretty cool sound, just as is. I mean, that's that's a really minimal sound, but it's it's a very strong sound. Okay, it it may sound uh, a little bit different than your typical production of a million mics on a kit. But what's cool about this and the method we're using today is that you can really push and pull a single microphone. A lot differently than you could multiple mics and hope that you don't run into issues. In fact, even with just two microphones, it kind of becomes difficult. Uh, there's actually a lot going on here with just two mics. And so it would be actually better with just the one mic. Um, but we're doing it with, with two today. <laughs> so the first thought I had is to kind of do some sort of compression with this and kind of my go-to with any of this stuff is going to be like a 76 style FET compressor you know and I've been really enjoying using this 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 is just really really adaptable there's so many nice different kind of facets to this 76a and the guys at Audio Escape, I think, really, really did a good job. I mean, you can hear the difference between every single ratio. There's a very distinct difference. There's a distinct difference between pushing the 20 and the 4, as it is now, versus pushing the maybe 20 and the 8, or the 8 and the 12 together, or all buttons in. So it has a very distinct sound depending on the buttons you push and depending on the attack and release characteristics. There's a lot of different flavors that come out of this compressor. It's, it's actually really, really uh, impressive and kind of enigmatic at the same time. 
it's one of those things that you you kind of you think you kind of understand it and then you go to use it and you're like okay well this source maybe I'll try this and it kind of gives you a little surprise as you go along now I do want to say before we go further that if you're on my email list I'm going to be emailing out these drum samples I went through and did single hits and also a, a steady groove I'll be processing it with all this stuff and emailing you out the drum samples and the drum loop to anybody on my email list if you'd like to get in on this you can sign up via the link in the upper right of your screen and I'll make sure to send you those samples right away within minutes and you can get these samples for use in your music or use the loop for something so you can sign up on the upper right of your screen so in studio one I have everything uh, everything I have both microphones going to a bus bus one on bus one I have two instances of the pipeline XT so this pipeline I have uh, plug-in number one plug-in number two and you know these pictures are so cool you can just take a picture of stuff you know browse for the photo and load it in and it saves it and it will uh, sync up it'll detect the time delay and then you can actually um, adjust the wet and dry you also can uh, flip the polarity and then feather the wet and dry until it cancels out and then that is basically your 50 percent wet and dry then you turn off the polarity flip and you have 50 percent wet and dry so the polarity flip is actually pretty cool a lot of times I'll set it to 50%. I'll adjust my output so that at 50% it's actually, you know, even. And that's how I get the volume match between, you know, completely dry and completely wet. Um, so, yeah, let's hear the overhead through the 76A. And the picture actually is accurate to how I have the compressor set. So let's add in the kick mic. So that was just kind of me playing around with the ratios, and you can hear that the the four sounds a little bit more jumpier. Uh, it's more obvious on probably a vocal, but um, each of these ratio settings has a distinct sound, and you, you play with it, and you really kind of learn like, oh wow, like it's a little bit different personality here. If I push this button, it sounds a little bit different here. So um, both buttons pushed in the middle, the 12 plus eight.
yeah so uh, you know that there sounds smoother it's you know no matter what you do if you combine say the 20 plus 12 that's going to be a, a heavier ratio than the 8 plus 4 and technically it doesn't it doesn't work like addition where you have you know 4 plus 8 equals 12 uh, it doesn't work like that and technically they say that like this should equal I gotta practice this there we go that should equal all buttons mode but again I don't I don't I, I don't see that these sound different than you know actual all buttons mode so this is very aggressive uh, this actually sounds great for vocal uh, this sounds really cool for uh, you know to be honest I'm hesitant to, hesitant to say what it's cool for because I'm still learning it like I've been messing with this for eight months now and like every day uh, I'm, I'm hearing something different out of this uh, so yeah it's been actually uh, just a lot of fun today we're using the 20 plus 4 is, is kind of what we're doing so the 20 plus 4 has kind of like a, a chewiness to it and what's cool about it is that with the um, with multiple buttons pressed you actually are getting a slower attack time so for drums you're actually getting some of the uh, kind of the DBX kind of flair uh, with the attack just that kind of like um, very, uh, uh, very definitive and kind of sharp attack. Usually for a, a compressor like this, it almost kind of chews up the transient. And if, you know, if you're using, say, you know, like an eight to one compression, um, we could actually have access to slower attack times by doing eight plus four, for example. You know, so anytime we have multiple buttons pushed, we're getting access to actually a little bit different um, attack time, a little bit slower attack time. And you don't have to have it slam just because you have multiple buttons pushed. You know, you can you can feather this very gently. So just because you have multiple buttons pushed doesn't mean that we have to slam the compressor. And um, with that mentality, you, you kind of can reinvent some of your multiple button pushes. Uh, so yeah, for today's kind of groove, we're doing the, what was it? Yeah, the 20 plus 4. And that was kind of my starting point. And then I decided, you know, let's check the phase relationships between the two mics. And so I liked that. I liked the EQ before to kind of shave off some of the low end to make it compress a little bit differently. Um, but I wanted to check the phase relationship. So that was kind of the next um, thing that I explored. And listen to it as is. And then I used the Sound Redix Auto Align. And it just really, I didn't think that it could have gotten much better, but I think it sounds better. So, here's before. So I thought that was actually really cool. I mean, I, I, I love this plugin because there's stuff that you just can't figure out necessarily and it's able to detect and make stuff line up and you can get the most out of something especially like this we have one microphone that's looking like this we have another microphone looking like this who knows exactly what the phase relationship is you can flip polarity it may or may not have the effect that that you think it will but the auto line really just kind of makes it tight and you get a lot of tone out of it so from here, I was like, you know what? This is really cool, but let's kick it up a notch. 
So my friend uh, Garrett over at Studio 412 uh, lent me his DIY RE uh, color uh, module. And I built recently a Cappy AM10, which is the Quad 8 op amp, and put that in. So I decided, hey, let's play this overhead mic through the AM10 and overdrive it. So here's a little bit of that. So one thing I noticed is that, you know, you lose a lot of the transients when you overdrive something. But in this case, I'm kind of losing some of the low end of that snare, too. Uh, that overhead mic sounds really nice. It, it just, it captures the meat of that snare drum. And I didn't want to lose kind of that fullness, that effect of having a kind of a big drum sound. I didn't want it to sound distant. And so... Instead of just letting this rip at about 2 o'clock or so, I decided to kind of take the mix down and give it about maybe 70% um, dry and 30% with the overdrive. So it's mostly a dry sound. And I get kind of more of the clarity, more of that fullness out of the snare drum. And this I can, I can control from here or from here it it doesn't matter and all of this is kind of automatically um detected so it'll just uh play the stuff through adjust it for me at 67 samples and then i can sit here and um it'll know out if i flip this polarity it'll actually know uh let me show you how that actually works So it's not going to know completely because we're we're doing something to it. We're changing the audio, but you kind of get it as close as possible. You you know adjust your output to kind of match and uh, kind of get the knob in kind of an optimum place, just so you know. Hey, you know, 0. 0.5 is about half and half. So yeah, we have a uh, 50% dry, 50% overdriven with this setting here. Now, a lot of times, a FET compressor can almost sound like distortion. I mean, it's a very, very fast compressor. And a lot of that can be just the quick release settings. Uh, when you have a room sound and you have something like drums, you have a very fast release time, it almost sounds kind of like how an overdrive would sound like this, where, I mean, technically this is compressing as well. So... It's important to know that we haven't added any saturation. Uh, we've used the FET compressor, which I guess technically is adding saturation, but we haven't deliberately done it. And this is the first time uh, with this. So I kind of left it at about, you know, 35 to 0.40 and kind of trying to get that lo-fi kind of 90s sound. 
Uh, and then from here, I kind of decided, well, this is cool. Let's do something with the kick mic. So that's just the kick mic going through the 76A. And I decided it'd be really cool <laughs> uh, to try the 164, the DBX 164. I wanted to get some punch. I wanted to see kind of what some gooey release time stuff would do. And just to kind of see if there was any kind of happy accidents that might happen. So. I routed it out, out and back in, and here's that. So this is actually pretty aggressive, and there's a secret that I have going on here that I didn't mention, and I don't know what this is called, I don't know if anybody else has done this, but it's a, a feed-forward feedback compression. So what it is is this is feedback, but these are feed-forward, and the idea is that the detector is after the actual compression that's happening. With these, it's detecting what to do and how to compress that sound kind of in a parallel process. Whereas this, it's after the compression. It's, it's kind of weird, but it compresses and then figures out, oh, okay, you know. And so I'm actually compressing, but then I'm feeding the output of one channel into the other. And that sounds like series or serial compression, right? But this is a stereo compressor. So one channel affects the other. So which, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? Which channel's driving what harder? The output of this actually gets increased just by nature. Um, this compressor ends up, ends up kind of like increasing the level. So then the channel two has technically a hotter level of input and it just makes for this really cool sounding compression. And you can actually do it without any compressor that'll do stereo or that'll link. So I've done it with uh, the Tiglu Audio. I've done it with just a pair of uh, 160 XTs. You can do it um, with really any compressor that you have. Um, I don't know how to do it on plugins, but you really just need to be able to link a compressor and feed one channel into the other. And it gives you a really cool aggressive sound. It's almost like an all buttons in mode for a compressor that doesn't have all buttons. <laughs> you know, like a DBX compressor, how do you get something like an all buttons in mode? Well, you feed one channel into the other and you stereo link them. So for the 166, you stereo link them. 160 XT and 160 X stereo link them. 164, it's already a stereo compressor. You get just a really aggressive sound. So yeah, that's that's definitely really cool. And with that, you now have kind of a snare sound coming from that, right? It's like a snare reverb, but also a kick mic. You see? So there's kind of some shared roles going on now. You have um, you have the overhead mic that get, that's getting the snare, but then you have the kick mic also getting the snare, but only when it's breathing. And it's also kind of like creating this really cool kind of rhythmic pumping. 
And so kind of the trick is, is to kind of play with it and see kind of the mix and how different things interact. And of course, something like a cut in the low end is going to affect the compression afterwards. I mean, there's kind of a lot of moving parts here for just two mics. Uh, so let's play around here and I'll show you what I mean.
Yeah, that's really cool. You know, it only works with all the layers there. It has to be this layer, that layer, that layer to really get that sound. You take away one layer and it affects the one after it. Um, what's really cool about this, and we went from the 20 plus 4, and this is the uh, 12 plus 8, and it just seemed to kind of change the character of how it compressed a little bit. And I don't know, there's something different about it. Right now, uh, there's kind of a really cool sustain, almost reverb to that snare. Uh, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, so we can see that going to the 20 and the 4, um, you know, it's almost like a combination of all the characters adding up. Because when you go to a higher ratio, I always think of it as the release kind of can get quicker. And we heard that actually. We went to the 20 plus 4, and the release time got faster. It got kind of that kind of distorted kind of cutting in and out sound. But the 12 plus 8 actually had a nice smooth sound to it. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, let's try the 8 plus 4. So that's what I'm talking about there on how each ratio sounds different. The lower ratios have a, a kind of a bigger sound, a more open sound. Um, as you use a lower ratio, low end will remain big. High ratios will really clamp down and make something sound small, but you also get more control and kind of a more grabby, faster kind of compression. And also typically some hard knee um, kind of action. So. Low ratios, the knee kind of softens up, the release time is kind of slow, and the low end kind of opens up, and the dynamics kind of breathe a little more. Um, it might sound even kind of quiet, um, as some uh, somebody commented uh, recently. Um, so it's just less compressed, as it should, as a low ratio. Um, but each of these have a different sound, which is just really cool because then you, you do different combinations and they really do actually sound unique. So uh, this was kind of, you know, what I've kind of been doing for the afternoon. Um, I'd be curious to know your thoughts and uh, tell me if you thought this was cool, kind of the hands-on approach of messing around with sounds, just kind of getting creative with uh, some gear, some mics, uh, some EQ, some compression. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll be hanging out there.